Hello everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today I wanted to talk about a specific plan that you guys can follow for the um, US, USMELE Step 1. Basically Step 1. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about <clears throat> my plan and how I went about it. It's been a few years since I did it, but I think I can remember kind of the, uh, kind of the small um, components of my kind of study plan. For those of you who don't know, step one is an eight-hour test that's taken after your second year of medical school. It's considered the most important test of your career because this is what residency directors and programs use to separate other applicants. Uh, for the competitive specialties, you have to do well in this exam. Um, so I wanted to go over my kind of the way I went about it and how I matched into orthopedic surgery kind of using this kind of plan. <coughs> so Number one, a couple of different, a couple of different things. Number one, you, the more questions that you do, the higher your score will be. Someone does 500 questions and you do 2,000 questions, um, you're more likely to score a higher score. The second thing is you have to have a specific plan kind of written out. What are you going to do from day to day? It shouldn't be a day that you get up and you say, oh, what am I going to do today for the board? So for step one, it needs to be a specific plan. You need to have it written out. So, what I did, and I suggest you guys do this, I started studying for step one halfway through my second year, so over the Christmas break. And most people don't realize this, but as you go through second year, uh, which is the majority of pathology, um, you're best essentially studying for the boards because they're basically teaching you everything that will be on the board. So, majority of um, step one is pathology, which you take during your second year. So. Over your Christmas break, everybody gets pretty much Christmas break, <clears throat> this is what I want you guys to come up with a plan and a written detailed plan of how you're going to attack step one. Um, some general uh, light reading um, and just kind of easing yourself into it. <clears throat> but when January comes around, you need to have a specific plan. So what I did is I took uh, the Kaplan uh, review course, the online course, and I divided that course up over, I counted the lectures, say for instance there are 40 lectures in that course. And I divided those lectures up over from January, February, March, and April. So that's four months. <clears throat> Say for instance, this is January right here. February, March, and April. Uh, for the Kaplan course, say for January, you need to um, do 30 lectures, 30 in February, 30 in March, and 30 in April. I'm not sure <coughs> how many lectures that there are in the actual course, but this is just an example. And throughout January, say January 1st, you need to do two lectures, January 2nd, two lectures, January 3rd, two lectures, until you complete those 30 in that section. And um, I did it this way so you can complete the course before you even sit down and study for your boards. Most people get four to six weeks to study for their boards, usually in the month of May or June. So by the time that comes around, when your classmates are just, <clears throat> just now starting to prepare for the boards, you have done an already review course. <clears throat> the second thing that need to, you need to do is the UWorld questions. Um, if you don't have UWorld, I would suggest that you get that. Most people in medical school do, they, they're aware about it. There are about 2,400 questions, and I calculated it out as uh, about 25 questions per day and about 600 questions per month. So 600 for February, January, February, March, and then April. <clears throat> so by the time that you're bored studying, you get four to six weeks. Most places give you um, four to six weeks. Comes around, you would have already done 2,400 questions. Um, you, you need to do this in addition to your normal kind of day-to-day uh, -day studying that you do in medical school from your classes. Um, the next thing, once it gets to actual May, when you have the four to six weeks, to you actually study. Uh, the first week, I would suggest doing a course called Pathoma, which is basically pathology. Uh, like I said, majority of your step one is pathology. So this course, I did it on two speed and went through the whole Pathoma course. I did that in about a week. That's gonna re go over everything once again. The uh, week two through five, it's actually two through six, you should be doing uh, first aid, 
first day of book, and then questions every night. The last two weeks, weeks four through six, <clears throat> you should do Kaplan questions. Kaplan questions are a little bit different than um, the uh, you wrote questions, and I think uh, it gets all the small details, and you want to get the details right before the test. So, to go back over it, you should start around December, January, January, divide the number of courses through the Kaplan online review course um, from January, February, March, April, and by the time you actually sit for your board studying, you have done a whole course already. You were out to make sure to do about 25 questions a day, 600 a month. By the time that you actually sit down for boards, you got 2,400 questions done. And then when you actually sit down to study for your boards, the four to six dedicated weeks, the first week, Pathoma on two speed, and the, uh, the second, <clears throat> the uh, last uh, five weeks, you're gonna do first aid and questions. In addition, weeks four and six, you wanna do Kaplan questions to get the small details now. There are a lot of different ways to study for the boards. It's just the way I did it and how I got into orthopedic surgery with uh, my score. But in general, like I said, the more questions that you do, the better. <clears throat> and the earlier that you start your bro the board study, and the kind of the better also. So um, if you guys have any more questions, email me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or contact me on my website, AntonioWebMD.com. See you next time.